Hello everyone. We are ending September on a high note, hopefully with the promised Saku Atsu. So strap down, let's go. As always, special thanks to my lovely patrons and all of you who subscribe and watch these videos. You are keeping this channel going and alive. I hope you will enjoy this one. One thing Atsumu always managed to forget was just how annoying it was to take care of Sakusa when he was sick. It was strange. His boyfriend, the person who cared about his health more than anyone he had met in his whole life, became the most annoying human being on earth the moment he started coming down with whatever seasonal sickness made its way to their team. He wasn't alone, as always. Half of the team was struggling with the sudden surge of some stomach bug they caught who knows where, which caused them to postpone several training matches and even give up on two official ones. Atsumu, one of the lucky ones, remained unaffected, at least physically. Come on, Omi, be nice and take your medicine. Sakusa no less than growled at him from the blanket cocoon he made himself into. Only his dark locks and one eye sticking out. If you mean that awful edible mud, I'm good. But it's good for you, really. You heard what the doctor said. You need to get that bug out of your digestive system. And this thing is supposed to help? Yeah, the pharmacist said it's the best thing for that. The single dark eye narrowed at him before disappearing under the covers. No thanks. Atsumu sighed, setting the glass on the table. He understood Sakusa's sentiment about the strange, almost solid liquid residing in the glass. It looked horrible, not even talking about the texture and taste. But medicine was like that, right? It was supposed to help, not taste good. Under normal circumstances, he would leave Sakusa to it and came back later with something to eat. Like always. But this time around, things seemed to be much worse. Sakusa barely managed to keep anything in his stomach for the last few days, and if Atsumu was going to see him gag out everything he ate one more time, his heart was going to shatter. With a soft sigh, he settled on the edge of the bed and gently rubbed his boyfriend's shoulder. Come on, Omi. You know I wouldn't push you into drinking that if it wasn't necessary. But it's for your health. When Sakusa didn't respond nor move, he clicked his tongue and got up, leaving the glass on the nightstand for later use, and headed to the kitchen. Fine then, be like this. I was just trying to help. Stubborn idiot. A voice suspiciously similar to Osamu sounded in his head as he tried to busy himself with preparing clutch for himself. Noting he had what he decided to date. He shooed the voice away, though he couldn't really say anything to oppose it. After all, he knew what he was getting into. Though he didn't expect Sakusa to be so uncooperative when he was unwell. Maybe that's just how he gets when he's really sick? That wouldn't be good. Guilt stunk in his chest over his rushed exit from their bedroom. Perhaps he should be more understanding in a situation like this. A relationship was supposed to be in good and bad, in sickness and health. If only someone told him what to do. He wanted to help his boyfriend, of course he did. But with Sakusa refusing to take any medicine, he was running out of ideas on how to do that. I wonder if we were like this with Samu too when we were kids. He paused. The thought gave him an idea, but before he managed to reach for his phone, the sound of rushed footsteps made him look up to the hallway. Sure enough, he didn't have to wait for long to hear the gut-wrenching retching from the bathroom. His chest constricted, his own gag reflex kicking in for a brief second before he collected himself. He set the phone aside for now and followed after his boyfriend, finding him breathing heavily and broken in waste over the toilet. He ran his fingers through the dark curls, taking note of how tangled they were, and also of the tears in corners of Sakusa's eyes. Better? 
Sakusa just shook his head, exhaustion almost seeping from him. Humming, Atsumu rubbed his back, waiting for Sakusa's stomach to stop torturing him for now. It's going to be okay, you'll see. You'll be healthy soon. A weak whine came in answer, prompting him to continue rubbing Sakusa's back to hopefully help soothe the faint trembles running through his body. My poor baby. Huh? Well, sorry for my compassion. I just don't like seeing my boyfriend in pain. Sakusa shook his head, but Atsumu knew better. He was a master in reading Sakusa's face. And right now, he could tell his boyfriend was, despite all the grumbling, glad for his present. And so he continued to stroke Sakusa's back, occasionally moving his hair from his face so he didn't have to worry about it, and waited. A few minutes later, Sakusa finally straightened and wobbled to the sink to rinse his mouth, an expression of absolute exhaustion settling on his face. Atsumu offered him an encouraging smile. Now you can take your medicine and you'll get better in no time. Over my dead body. Homie! As quietly as he could, Atsumu tiptoed out of the darkened bedroom, thanking the gods that Sakusa finally fell asleep. It almost felt like putting a baby to sleep, but Sakusa needed to rest, and if Atsumu had to play a parent for a while, so be it. Speaking of parents, he plopped down on the couch with a quiet huff, finally getting his phone and dialing the number he wanted. It took barely two rings for the call to go through. Hey, mom. Tsumu, dear. Took you long enough to call again, you rascal. Yeah, I know. Sorry. There's a lot going on here right now. Something bad? Um, not entirely. It's not catastrophic. No one is dying or injured, if you are thinking that. Oh, thank goodness. You got me worried there for a while. But I need a bit of help. That's why I'm calling. Then tell. Ma will always help. Atsumu had to smile. He should have thought of calling his mom sooner. If someone knew how to defeat sickness, it was their mother. It's about Ome. He's sick, but doesn't want to take the medicine I got for him. <laughs> Just who does that remind me of? Come on, mom. We were kids. No kid wants to take medicine. Otome is an adult, and I don't know what to do with him. A soft hum came from the other end. Well, you can always bribe him with something. That worked well with Samu. Yeah, but you can bribe Samu to do anything if you have enough food. That's not going to work on Omi. Then you can try plain crackers or rice and ginger or peppermint tea. That could work for him since it's not medicine per se. You can lie to him a bit about it too if you're up to it. He wasn't. He didn't like lying to his boyfriend, even if it was something small. But this was an exceptional situation. Okay, I'll try that. Thanks, Ma. You're a savior. Oh, Shash. You are making me blush. Tell Sakusakun I said hi and that I wish him a fast recovery. Will do. He ended the call feeling much lighter than before, as if some invisible weight had lifted from his shoulders. That's Mom for you. With a phone smile, he checked the clock and got up to look through their fridge. Hopefully, at least something was going to work. To his surprise, Sakusa managed to stay asleep for over two hours, which was, given the previous experience and how sick he probably felt, an actual miracle. And hopefully, it was also a sign that his health was improving. Still, Atsumu refused to leave anything to fate and prepared a little plate with crackers, rice, and a cup of ginger tea, together with a glass of cold Coca-Cola, which he then carried to the bedroom. Mommy, how do you feel? He had to admit Sakusa didn't look as green as before, and his grumble also didn't sound that dead. He was obviously still far from being completely fit, 
but at least it seemed that his last visit of the toilet bowl wasn't for nothing. I would feel better if I got trampled by a herd of horses. Thanks for asking. Well, I see our humor is back, so it can't be that bad. He set the plate on the bedside table and gently nudged Sakusa's shoulder. Do you think you can eat something? If you are holding the godforsaken mud again, I swear I'll... It's not you, Grump. It's just coke. Sakusa made a grimace, but slowly unwrapped himself from the blanket nest he made for himself and sat up, obediently taking over the glass and spoon. Just a few sips, and drink slowly. I know, I know. And then I have a snack for you. Sakusa eyed him dubiously over the edge of the glass before his gaze fell on the plate next to him. What's that? A remedy for your stomach. It's mom approved. You can trust me. I find it difficult after what you've put me through. Oh, come on, Omi. Don't be oversensitive. I was trying to help you, but you are too stubborn to let me. I'm not drinking mud. Okay, fine. I admit that thing is disgusting. But I'm sure it would help. Sighing, Sakusa swallowed a few more spoons of coke before hesitantly reaching for one of the crackers, a visible shudder running through his body when his eyes briefly fixed on the other glass still laid on the nightstand. It's making me more sick just by looking at it, that's all. He quickly looked away, turning his attention to the cookie in his hand. Are you sure this is not going to come back up immediately? I mean, I can't say for sure how your stomach will react, but mom said these are well digestible, so it should be okay. At least try it. I promise I won't force you to eat them if they make you sick. Sakuza hesitated for a beat before taking a small bite of the cracker. They both waited with held breaths, but if Atsumu could judge by Sakusa's unchanging expression, his stomach stayed settled. It didn't take long for Sakusa to eat the whole thing after that, and Atsumu beamed. See? All's good? Don't jinx it, would you? But even in his grumpy tone, Atsumu could hear a hint of happiness and relief. No wonder. Everything was better with at least something in one's stomach. Do you want to sleep a bit more? Maybe. Stay with me. Smiling, Atsumu climbed on the side of the bed, snuggling to Sakusa in a way that didn't restrict his movement in case he needed to get up fast, but still let them be close as if everything was alright. Sure thing. Sleep well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Not only this video, but also the whole themed month, all the sick fix. I'm still slightly disappointed that I didn't do all eight of them, but five is still a good number for me and for my time, time management issues and all that stuff. So thankfully at least five. <laughs> That's good. And now we are going to be moving on to Ominous October, which is focused on Herd Comfort for the most part, and also Halloween themed. So if that's your vibe, you are up for a treat. Hopefully. I will be crossing my fingers. If you have any requests or ideas, the request form is linked in the video description. See you next time.